hello. You're listening to the Leadership Woman podcast with me, Jill Savile. And today I thought it would be useful to pull out some of the leadership lessons from last week. If you remember, it was Dr. Sathena Watson from the NHS in the UK. And her journey was just so inspiring. If you've not listened to it, then marvel at how somebody can have gone through so many setbacks in her life and yet remain such a a beautiful soul, somebody with no chip on her shoulder, with no edge to her. And uh, it was a real pleasure and privilege to to interview her. So um, listen to it if you haven't already. But here are my thoughts from it. The first and probably the biggest is she's such a, a good example of a growth mindset. Uh, if you've not read the book Mindset by Carol Dweck, then I would recommend it. Uh, or I think she did a TED Talk. And based on 20 years of research, she realized that there were two different kinds of mindset. One was a fixed mindset, where we think that our abilities, our IQ and everything else are, are fixed. And this leads us not to want to attempt anything new. We don't want to try something in case we fail uh, because it might just be beyond our abilities. Conversely, a, a growth mindset is this, this idea that we can continually adapt. We can continually grow. And this is how we learn, of course, to try things that we've never done before. And the first time we do it, we're not any good. And we just gradually get better at it. But, but the growth mindset allows us to take a risk, make a choice, try something new. And Sathena was just such a great example of this. If you remember, she had to go back to not quite to square one, but when she started the pre-med course, she had to get through maths. It was one of the modules. And she... She looked at it. it, it was years since she'd been at school, she looked at the questions and she thought, you know what, I just can't do this. Um, but she found somebody else that they seemed to be in a similar boat and she just got extra lessons and she passed it. So a growth mindset, that was the first lesson. The second thing was all about, and I wanted to say resilience, resilience is the word that people use a lot but in fact I want to mention anti-fragility I think I've man mentioned it before Jonathan Haidt did a short video on this I think on Big Think uh, but resilience if you think about it plastic is resilient it can withstand a lot of knocks um, and it just stays the same as it is the idea of anti-fragility is that if you, um, like our immune system has a certain number of knocks, it needs to be challenged in order to develop and get better. And this uh, idea of human beings, in fact, are, are the same. What we should want for our children is that they are anti-fragile, that they're strong enough to go through a certain amount of trouble and strife, but but we do get better. It's not quite what doesn't kill you makes you better, but, but that kind of thing. Let's all become anti-fragile. So here are some of the things that she just pressed on regardless. Uh, when she was young, girls don't do science. You won't succeed at that. There's no point applying for this. You won't get into medical school. Uh, and one that I will always remember, don't bother going in for medicine because people over 30 don't have the intellectual capacity. That's what she was told. And as if it's not enough to have outside knocks, 
and challenges. Of course, there's always that voice in our head that we've got to overcome, the saboteurs. And she mentioned one, which was, ah, oh, the university's made a big mistake choosing me. I'm just not good enough to do this. The third thing is vision, dream, goal. If you remember, she came to the conclusion that what she really wanted to do was be a doctor. And this was a really big dream, but she had no clue, no idea how to achieve it at all. And in fact, she wrote down a list of things that she would have to come in order to be a doctor. And she looked at the list and she thought that this is impossible. But that's what a dream, that's what a vision is. When I'm working with people, it, I try to get them to think about what they really, really want without their minds assessing it as they are developing it, thinking, well, I can't do that, that won't work. I'm not a person who. So you know when a vision is big enough because you have no idea where to start. So that was her vision to be a doctor and she has achieved it. The fourth thing we need is people. We need encouragers. We need lifters, not leaners, as John Maxwell would say. He also says nothing of significance can be achieved alone. So she mentioned a couple of people who had believed in her when other people hadn't. So make sure that you surround yourself with the encouragers in life. The fifth thing is timing. I'm using John Maxwell a lot today, but he said, um, it's been said that managers do things right while leaders do the right things. The law of timing says that leaders do more than that. They do the right things at the right time. And how Sathena, um, in her story, when I was thinking about timing, there were certain obstacles that came along and she had to make choices that were, okay, uh, it's, it's not the right time. And she made the decision, the right decision for then. And I've talked before about Brexit and making the decision to apply for French nationality. I, I realised I just had to make the best decision for me at that time. And so you will be faced with decisions and don't ever think that that decision is forever. But anyway, I digress. Let's go back to timing. So timing is everything. Um, he says the wrong action at the wrong time leads to disaster. That's straightforward. The right action at the wrong time brings resistance. Oh, my word. Uh, probably as a leader in an organization, you've tried to bring in something that, that is probably the right thing but you've not brought people along with you so the right action at the wrong time brings resistance the wrong action at the right time is just a mistake get over it and what we all want to achieve is the right action at the right time because that results in success so she wasn't put off she just kept coming back to it it was okay to change direction to do something in a different way she made the best decision for now and the final thing then from her story was just take life as it comes because she could have plans she could have dreams but then life gets in the way and she had some knocks in her life but you just get on with it and you enjoy life as it goes along so I recommend that you listen to her. I'm probably not doing her, her justice, but these were five things that I took away from my interview with her. Um, I'm going to do two more interviews this week, so uh, look out for, for new people. But for now, this is the end of the Leadership Woman podcast. If you did, remember to click like. Also remember to follow it because then you will be reminded these podcasts come out every week. But for now, have a good week and see you next time.